today on Divorce Court. I'm on Divorce Court today because my wife is rude and unruly. I believe my husband is cheating and he hasn't been honest. My wife thinks I'm cheating, but I'm not doing anything. She's being insecure. All he wants to do is be with thoughts. Keisha likes to physically fight, and uh, if I'm not around for her to fight, uh, she likes to fight my things. He says I break his things. Yes, I do. I think that's better than breaking his face. I want her to work on her anger. I don't want to leave, but his actions are pushing me away. If Keisha changes, I can see myself staying with her forever. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Keisha Thompson and David Wilkins. Ms. Thompson and Mr. Wilkins, you two have been together 10 years, married for the two, last two and a half, and you have three children together. You are, however, having difficulties, thus you are in divorce court. Ms. Thompson, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why are we here today? Well, we're here today because of my husband's infidelity and his dishonesty. Um, he has been lying to me for several months, and when I call him on it, he gets angry. Um, I really do love him, and I really want to work things out. I just don't know where to go from yeah. here. Mary hurt, um, because I really love this man. He just, he won't stop lying. He can you, can you tell me... When you first find out that he was cheating, tell me a story. How'd you find out? Well, I had looked in his phone. He has three phones. Um, he works a lot. And so he has two work phones and a personal phone. And I looked through his phone and I saw a text message from a woman who told him, good morning, handsome. Now, this is 7 o'clock in the morning when you're at home with me. And he texts her back, good morning, beautiful. So I asked him about the text and he tells me he didn't know who that was. He gives me all of this stuff about how he, um, the phone was someone else's before it was his. But when I looked at the text message, he had already had the phone for a week. So my thing is, you're that disrespectful that you can text somebody while you laying in the bed with me to tell them good morning. And then when I called the person, they, she played dumb, act like she didn't know who it was. Two weeks later, I look at his personal cell phone. I see the same number in the phone. He's steady telling me he don't know who it is, and he knows who it is. He knows, he knows who it is, but he's trying to make it seem like I'm crazy and I'm paranoid and I'm disrespectful, but really he's the one disrespectful to me because I would never do that to him. Mr. Wilkins, are, are you cheating on your wife? No, I'm not. I'm actually just... I'm actually, like, a pretty cool, decent guy. I just... Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I don't know. I play a lot of games sometimes. You play a lot of games. What kind of games? The same stuff that she was talking about. You know, like women, they text my phone and things like that. And you, and know, you I, say, hey, beautiful, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't know. I just be, I don't know, talking back, just entertaining, not you doing something I've never been doing. You think it's fun and flirting? Yeah. But no actual touching nah, is what you're telling no. me. He's lying. I mean, he done already came clean that it's been an infidelity with this co-worker who I've been questioning about. This woman has been calling him. She's been texting him. They've been direct messaging. How can you sit and lay in the bed that we pay for, that we pay for, and you text somebody else? It's so disrespectful. And then you're upset because I'm angry and I'm trying to hold everything together for our family, but you keep doing the things that you say you're not going to do and we're supposed to be working on it. And the whole time that we're supposed to be working on it, this is what he's been doing, even to this day. Did you have an inappropriate relationship with a co-worker? No, I didn't. Actually, you know, my wife, she does uh, hair and nails and things like that. So really, the girl was, was conversing with me about how she wanted to get some stuff done. So I invited the girl to my house. But ever since that day when she came over, I, and she just, I don't know, she just... She just, yeah, she just, out of the blue, out of whole cloth, she's making this stuff up. No, she's not making it up, you know, but like I say, sometimes when you already have things on your mind, you know, you start to look Misinterpreting too far, look too far into on. things that's not... Well, I understand you found a condom and a jacket and a thong. Can get, get all the stories yeah, out found, so we can first, talk to I him. found he was supposed to be helping someone move. And, I, I mean, I know that sometimes I could be a bit extra. That is very true. But it's only when I feel like he's deceiving me because he's not a liar, but I know he's been lying. And I found the condom. He told me that he that he switched it with somebody else's jacket. My thing was like, <laughs> if, if you knew how, if you know how your wife is and you know that I'm gonna pop off, why would you not throw the condom out? Because the first thing I'm gonna say is, what you doing? Mm -hmm. Then you texting this coworker. It's a work jacket. Y'all texting each other. One o'clock in the morning. Do you know just last week, the thing about it is that he always tries to justify why she's texting him. You have no justification why another woman is texting my husband. 
The only person you should be concerned about is your wife, and he's not. He keeps telling me he want to work it out, but how? You can't even stop for one day to just not think about her and think about me and what we built. Right. Mr. Wilkins, your response? Uh, her jealousy is at an all-time high. <laughs> She I talking have a right about to be jealous. She talking about like this jacket. Like it, it, she need to tell a whole story. How okay? would you feel? What you, you found you that in my purse? The it's whole a work, Miss Thompson. It's a work you jacket. You tell me the whole story. It's, it's, it's a work jacket. So you know, it, it, it all got the same company logo mm -hmm. on it. So you know, when we finished moving and stuff, I just put the jacket on and I went on about my business. I didn't check the pockets. I don't check mm -hmm. my pocket before mm -hmm. I go outside. Mm -hmm. What about this one in particular individual? Is the, is there someone that you do keep in contact with a bit much? And do do you see how? Her jealousy can be piqued because of the nature or the, the frequency of your contact with an individual? Yes, I definitely do understand that. But she need to realize she invited this person into our lives. I didn't tell her to come over our house. She wanted no, to be her friend. And, he, no, you know, he she, did. She wants you to be her friend. Her. I, I didn't need no money from her. I have clients. You invited her over to our house. You were talking about I invited her. You introduced her to me. I didn't know her. I was fine not knowing this doc. But now you don't let a permanent boo-boo stain come and mess up what we built and you want to sit here and try to make it seem like I'm crazy when you being disrespectful? How would you feel if I was laying in the bed with you texting some man, telling him, hey, beautiful, explaining to him why I didn't call him? That's so dis... I would never disrespect you like that, David. Never. You understand what she's saying? I mean, I cannot believe that you are totally innocent when all of the, you know she has all of these very specific details of what you're doing, can you just step back off of denying it for just a moment to say maybe even if you're not cheating, maybe some of the things that I do do with respect to other women is disrespectful? Can yeah, I get there? That, that's something that I told her. I told her this a thousand times. Then why like I say, hang we got, on, hang on. We got our own things going on. Like okay, I, I'm, I might be you know you know, talking to other women and stuff like that, but it all starts with her anger in the first place. She controls everything. She always wants to fight physically. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's her thing. That's, that's before all the cheating and stuff even, you know. Okay, so I want to move on to that. So you say that she is, as she claims, a bit extra. I want you to tell me how extra she really is. You're sitting here trying to make an excuse for the stuff that you're doing, and I've done nothing to you but be good to you. I've been with you for 10 years, David. I've never cheated, even though you cheated on me twice. How can you sit here and act like you, you innocent? The reason why I act like that is because of the things that you do to me. You did this. I didn't do this. So, Mr. Wilkins, you say that she is just out of pocket when she gets angry. Yes, she is. Give me some examples of what's going on. Okay, like I say, you know, she keeps tabs on me, whatever I do, like the phone and stuff like that. So, like I say, if she calls me, like if I go outside or anything, just go to a barbecue or something like that, she has to text me and call me every five to ten minutes. If you she would stop, to, she, she stop. Me to, she, she want me to FaceTime and show who all in the background and all this craziness. <laughs> And if I don't do what she asks me to do, you know, it starts to get physical. She likes to throw punches or she likes to claim that she's gonna do, you know, she kicks me out of my house every day. Because I asked this man, the day that this woman came and got her lashes done, did, were they having sex? You know what he did? I asked him this in the privacy of our home between husband and wife. He went and told her, you know what? She think we doing it to each other. How could you feel like you owe her so much loyalty and you owe me none? You're sitting here trying to she make an excuse for the stuff that you're doing and I've done nothing to you but be good to you. I've been with you for 10 years, David. I've never cheated, even though you cheated on me twice. How can you sit here and act like you, you innocent? The reason why I act like that is because of the things that you do to me. You did this. I didn't do this. So I didn't me, do this. So I, me cheating okay. on you twice get Your you words really are unruly hurtful. every day for 10 years. That hey, hey hang on, I Mr. Wilkins. Let me, let me explain to you what... what I'm going to explain to you what your problem is, but I'm going to allow her to finish speaking because I think she's got a lot on her heart that she has to get out. All I why ask... don't t you tell me about how you feel on the day-to-day. -day. Because I think you're scared to death all the time. You're frustrated and you're frightened and it comes out as anger. It's, Tell I'm, me. Every day is different. I've been going through something very personal that has really affected everything. It's just been like a downward spiral and the person who's supposed to be my best friend is not there for me. He entertaining other people. He, at one o'clock in the morning, 
tell, calling her babe, calling her love. Still, we in L.A., we supposed to be focusing on us, and he can't do it. I'll, if you don't want to be here, just tell me that. Because I want to be here. Mr. Wilkins, and hang on just a second. Yes. Let us all assume that she is extra and has always been extra, even before the two times you cheated. Wouldn't it behoove you not to do suspect and suspicious things knowing that she's... What her, what her anger is is a basis of fear. She thinks she's gonna lose you. So every time you feed that fear, she just loses her mind because she's scared all the time. She's fighting for her very life. Wouldn't it behoove you to behave in a manner that does not invoke anger and rage? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, like I say, I love Keisha. Me and her, we've been together for 10 years, and she, you know, Do she Do you might... love her enough to stop texting this other woman, hey, babe, flirting and all that. Do you love her enough, enough for that? Yes. I, you know, I, I don't have to text her and do all these things. I don't have to do that stuff. I but just... you have been doing them, right? Yes, I have. Yeah. You got to tell her you're going to stop and tell her you're sorry and tell her you know how it made her feel. Go ahead. I already do every no, day. No, 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 no. You can't came in here and you it. defended what, what you did and you continue to do it. She said you even did it while you were here in, here in L.A. So you're continuing to do it. You can't recover from behavior you don't own. You with me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to try to help you guys get off of dead stop crazy. But I want to hear about one more thing before I do. We don't communicate. Uh, anytime she says anything to me, it's with eyes full of tears. You know, she doesn't just say, David, this is, you know, X, Y, Z is what's wrong with me. What she does is she comes in with the, with the the tears are already running, so now I'm like, oh my God, now I gotta hear this all day. How would you feel if your spouse shared your conversations with another woman? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. Ms. Thompson, you say he's so guarded that he can't even have a discussion with you unless he's drinking. Why don't you explain to me what your communication issues are? Well, with David, it's hard to talk to him when you say one thing he don't like or that he thinks doesn't make sense. He cuts you off, he shuts it down, he'll say he don't give a F, he ain't talking to me no more, and that's it. And the only time that we could really communicate openly is if we've had a few drinks and he's open and willing to talk. Other than that, he has his poker face on, like that face he got right now, that's the face every day, all day. He never showed no emotion, it's only either just anger. That's it. And when I'm telling him directly what I need from him, he's still not willing to do that. So I, I just, I don't know what to do. Mr. Wilkins, do you, did, did you hear what she said? Yes. Okay. What is your response to how you two communicate? Uh, we don't communicate. Mm -hmm. Uh, anytime she says anything to me, it's with eyes full of tears. And I, I, for some odd reason, I just don't respond to that. You know, that's why when, like, we're having a couple drinks and we're having a good time, then, you know, I can open up a little more. But she does not, you know, she doesn't just say, David, this is, you know, X, Y, Z is what's wrong with me. What she does is she comes in with the, with the, the tears already running. So now I'm like, oh my God, I'm now hurt. I gotta hear this all day. I'm hurt. You hurt me. That's why I say, like, you know, after we, if we sit down and we talk together, then it's, it's, it's a little easier. But those tears, it's like, man, she's trying to, like, she's trying to make me cry. I don't want to cry. I'm not trying. <laughs> Let me ask you, and, and don't, don't be defensive. Just, just be open and be, be ready for it. Do you contribute to the love and the care in the household in a meaningful way? Do you do things that make her comfortable and happy and feel good? Do you do that? All the time. That's all I ever do. Give me some examples. It's not everything. That's all I ever do. Give me some some examples. Uh, like like I say, you know, like man, my kids they love me to death. So that's how you know I'm more involved. If I walk in the door, everybody is with me. They're no longer downstairs, you know, screaming and hollering with yeah. her. You're they talking upstairs. about the kids. I want to talk about how she feels. What do you do to contribute meaningfully to her emotional state of mind? <sighs> I have no idea, to be honest. See, see, and you know why you don't have any idea? Because you don't. 
And what happens is when you don't care for her in an emotional way, she becomes crazed with it. She is starving for affection and appreciation because you don't do anything about it. Now, she comes at you all wrong when she asks for it, but you're not doing it in the first place. And that's what's put her there. So let's talk about how we can get off of where we are. How should you communicate when one partner is always more emotional? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. You know, it doesn't take much to make a woman happy. It really doesn't. It's a lot easier than most men think. A little care and concern, five minutes a day. How was your day? How are you, baby? A hug. A f you know, one thing a day to make her think you think she's important will change everything. It's extraordinary. And a lot of guys come in here and say, well, I come home and I'm making money. What's your problem? And that she needs to feel loved. And she doesn't feel that from you. And not only that, you spend your time make, saying, hey, beautiful to someone else, but you don't say it to her. I do say you, that. But, she but, don't but, respond. But, but l let me just say this. You are only responsible for what you do. I'm going to talk to her about what she's doing. But when I asked you how and, and the ways in which you care for her and make her feel important, you came up with absolutely nothing. And you came up with nothing because that's what you're giving her. That is what you need to change in order for this relationship to change. Now, Ms. Thompson... Let me say this to you. You have to give him an opportunity to fix what is without ha him having to address everything that was. You have to be in a position of letting go what happened if what is happening is better. Because he can't make all that go away. And he, if you keep making him address that, he, one day he's just going to bounce. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, whether or not she comes along with a better attitude immediately or not is neither here nor there. You're responsible for what you do. Now, once he does that, which he's going to do, right, Mr. Wilkins? Yes. <laughs> once he does that, you got to step off all that angry. But what if he don't stop? If he doesn't stop and you can't live with it, bouncing is an option. <laughs> I, if I was in an atmosphere of constant dark, and Kate, I would do everything I could to change it, but in the absence of change, you have to decide whether you can live with what it is and be happy, and if not, you can move on. You're financially able. You just have to be emotionally able to do that. He sounds like a guy who's going to take care of his kids no matter what, because he loves them, but you've got to decide whether or not you're going to remain miserable. You know what I mean? I've told him what he needs to do. You're the only person who can say he's not doing it, and therefore, I'm not taking it. But that decision is up to you. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Do better, Mr. Wilkins. You, can, you, you are the author of your own pain. You can stop it if you want to. You need to, you, you need to know when to call it a day. See, I know when to call it a day. It's a day. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> desperate and hopeful to keep my marriage together. I mean, I love this man. We've been together 10 years. And he's really good to me. I just wish he could just get it together just for the sake of our family and for the love that he say he have for me because I know he do. Uh, when the judge said that she should leave, uh, it kind of it kind of hit me to the core. It made me realize that I need to do better and be better before somebody who really loves me is gone. <laughs>